All right. So before we move on, we should recognize that the notes also have alphabetical names. So we've been talking about the key of C major, where the one note starts on the C. But where's the A note where the alphabet begins? It's down here. <laughs> so from here it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Why did they make that the A scale? Who knows? Who knows? And remember, these names like A or C are for the keys themselves, not the note relationships like what we've been talking about with the numbers. Remember, the one key could be any note, depending on the song. But the A key itself, or the C key, that, those never move. Those are just notes on the keyboard. But the numbers could change depending on the way you're playing the song. So there are more keys than just C major. Let's move up one step from there, from C major to D major, from to, okay, okay, so in this new key, the D key is now the one. This used to be the one, now it's this one. And notice how for this scale, in order to play the major scale with the same note relationships as a C major scale, I have to add in a couple black keys. So here are the two scales compared to each other. First C major, no black keys, and then D major. All right, a couple of black keys now, just a couple, these two. And play it all together. The note relationships are the same, but now we're using black keys. So each key signature has a different number of black keys associated with its major scale. C major is the only major scale with no black keys. F major has one black key, which is a flat B. Here's that scale. Okay, B flat major has two flats, the B flat plus the E flat. Listen to that. Okay, 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 easy, all right, you get how that goes. A flat major has four flats, the B flat, E flat, A flat, and now D flat, getting a little more complicated now. All right, see if you can pay attention to that. All right, now D flat major has five flats, the B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and now G flat. Here's how that one sounds. Getting a little more complicated, and then G flat major has all of the flats. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and now C flat. How the heck do you play a C flat? You remember this, the, the C note here. How do you make that flat? There's no black key next to it. Well, if you're gonna make that note flat, you just go one half step down to B. So it just turns into a B. C flat is B. It's a little silly, but that's just how it works. So G flat major scale. All right, all right, easy, easy. So instead of making notes flat, you can also find more keys by making notes sharp. And remember, so a sharp note, let's say I'm back in C for this example, and I wanna make that flat five, that's, that's that note, and then I wanna make a sharp five, it's that note. So sharps are going up one direction onto a black key. So remember, C major has no sharp or flat keys. So from there, let's start adding one sharp. Let's go to G major, which has one sharp note, F sharp. So here's that scale. Easy, easy. And then the key of D major has two sharps, F sharp plus C sharp. Here's that scale. Easy, okay, okay. And then A major has three sharps, F sharp plus C sharp plus G sharp. Here's how that sounds. And then E major has four sharps, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. Here's that scale. Okay, okay, not too complicated. Now what's in a name? Would a key by any other name still sound as sweet? So some of these keys can be called multiple things. The key of D flat could also be called C sharp. Look at this. It's, here's D, you make D flat is also making C sharp. So if you're asking like, well, why would it go be called D flat instead of C sharp? It's called both. They're the same chord. They're the exact same note. Um, G flat, for instance, is also called F sharp. I prefer to call it F sharp. And if you're really feeling weird, the key of B, like we talked about, that could be, that could be thought of as C flat. I know it's weird, but that's just how it works. Ultimately, it's really not important what the notes are called. Music theory, like the language of it, that doesn't really matter just that you understand how to preserve note relationships between keys. If you understand it musically, if you understand it with your ear, that's what matters. So for instance, the major triad, as you know in C major, is C, E, and G, or the notes one, three, and five. One, two, three, four, five, one, three, five. 
That's the major triad. Uh, in E major, for instance, the one, three, five are now E, G sharp, and B. Notice how the note relationships are preserved, but they're in different keys and they use different notes to play. So any song can be played in any key if you understand those note relationships. When notes are directly adjacent, like C and C sharp, those intervals are called a half step. And when notes are almost adjacent but have one small note in between, like C and D, we call that interval a whole step. There are half steps between D and D sharp, for example, E and F, and even B and C, just to name a few examples. And for examples of whole step intervals, think of D and E, or even G sharp and A sharp. So now that you know that, think of all the major keys we've learned. For every major scale, the distance between each note is a whole step. That may mean going from a white note to another white note, or jumping up to a black note, like the E scale. This changes depending on the key. Now you may also remember the minor chords we learned earlier. If there are minor chords, couldn't there also be minor scales, or even a minor key? Of course! Every major scale that we discussed in this video has a corresponding minor scale using the same notes, but starting on the six instead of the one. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the six. All right, so for instance, here's the C major scale, starting on the one. And here's the A minor scale, starting on the six. Here's the six. Six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how you would count it. It's a little weird to count, but the note relationships are still there. That's an A minor scale using the exact same notes as the C major scale, but it changes which note you start on. Easy. So for every major key, you can find its minor key by starting on the six. So we're going to talk about some more chords in the next video. Join me there and we'll just keep on learning.